So personally, I hate being told what to do. And when someone tries to dictate how to live your life, you inherently get mad. Even if it, if it, if it is about small, unimportant things. No, mom, I don't want Anna at my birthday party, for example. Or no, I don't want to eat all of my vegetables. I don't like them and it's my opinion and you should respect them. There is actually quite a fine line between the so-called freedom and abuse. And today I'm going to attempt to clarify this uh, blurred line. A quite illustrative example of poorly understood freedom of opinion has captured my attention recently, and I want to share this with you. Um, before we begin, another small notion about me. I am a highly convinced feminist, and I tend to talk to my friends a lot about this, and they agree with me, then if I talk some more, they agree with me. Then I talk some more and they are just basically stop. They stop listening. Um, so I was talking to a friend of mine about um, this case that I read about. It was a woman that was raped uh, after she went outside the bar. And without batting an eye, my friend said, oh, the poor guy, she asked for it, you know, and it was her fault. And now the guy gets the blame. It's sad, really. Needless to say, our opinions on the subject were very different. But, you know, that's normal. People have arguments and debates and they tend to stick to their own opinions. However, there are cases in which an opinion is not actually an opinion. And it sounds crazy, I know, but it's true. And this happens when someone's conceptions and ideas clash violently with the norms set by society. Now, I am not saying that telling someone that you don't like their dress or that they should go on holiday somewhere else than they initially wanted to is bad. That's simply someone's opinion, which when shared can oftentimes lead to actually good advice or constructive criticism. And all of these being healthy methods of self-growth, therefore they should be encouraged. Now, what I do say, is that a person of authority telling a woman she should wear tighter clothes in the workplace or verbally abusing a child for their condition is not an opinion and should not be considered an opinion. That is not freedom of speech. Freedom of speech is a basic human right that most people are aware of um, to a more bigger or a lesser extent. But sometimes when we exercise this right, we tend to forget its most valid aspect which is that it is a human right for all humans to benefit from, not just ourselves. And going around and demanding that people respect our freedom without doing so in return is not open-mindedness, it's tyranny. And dictators all over the world at any given point in time have ruled with this wrong mindset. It is right to command these people to do as I please, but they have no rights of their own. A clear complex of superiority, such as this, is in fact freedom's greatest enemy. And believing yourself to be of more importance than the others around you does not mean that you are confident in yourself. Those are two completely different things. Being confident is actually something that should be encouraged more. And being aware of one's own value means that you can always make the most of your intellectual assets, for example, which is a very good thing. But believing yourself to be superior to others, that is not confidence and should not be considered confidence. Now I'm going to give an example. Let's say one day that you go to your favorite restaurant and sit down as you have done countless of times before. You order your favorite meal, which is steak, fish and chips, burgers, pancakes, ice cream, whatever. It doesn't really matter. But as your order arrives, and you get ready to dig in, someone walks to you and throws your plate on the floor. Now that would make you angry, wouldn't it? Of course it would. You would demand an explanation, which is reasonable. And the person will tell you with a condescending smile that they know better than you, that you should never eat that dish again, and they get to make that choice for you. Also, you should thank them for it while you're at it. That's supremacy. And taken to a larger scale, this type of mentality leads to discrimination, hate crimes, and even eradication in mass. And this is actually born from the inevitable idea that we all have on a certain level, which is that we know better than everybody else. And in some cases, that is in fact true. But we need to keep in mind that we only know what's best 
for ourselves. That's freedom of speech. Being able to choose for ourselves, making choices for others, it's rude and taken to a certain extent, it can even be dangerous. That is the difference that most people don't actually understand. We are free to make our own choices and we are not, however, free to make choices for other people. We all hate it when people start telling us what to do, claiming that they know better. And <clears throat> as I said before, um, expressing your opinion is not a bad thing. This is concerted, concerted criticism. But we all need to learn the distinction between constructive criticism, which is a healthy expression of opinion, and rude imposing. I remember in middle school that we had to write some poems for Mother's Day. And I was particularly excited as I do have a knack for writing and my colleagues knew that too. And when one of them asked me to write a poem for his mom as well because he wasn't so good at writing things or making artistic um, creations. And I agreed to help uh, him because um, I was helping someone which was a very good thing and I'm also doing something I like which is writing poems, so why not? It was a pretty much win-win situation for me. But of course, as things tend to escalate when you give free candy to a mob, in no time, everyone wanted me to write their poems. And I agreed to help them all, which in hindsight, it, is a, it was a pretty bad idea, but nevertheless. I also agreed to help a girl that was particularly mean, and not only to me, but I wanted to help her nevertheless. And when I finished her poem, she just looked it over quickly and crumpled the paper and threw it on the floor, claiming that it wasn't good or special enough, that it was similar to the ones I wrote for my other classmates, that it had nothing um, out of the ordinary, that I was no good at all, and uh, that I shouldn't write anything ever again anymore. Now, we cannot argue the fact that that might have being indeed her honest opinion, because honestly, I'm not exactly sure how brilliant a sixth grader's poem written in a couple of minutes can be, but it is a very hurtful manner in which she conveyed her message. And I felt really bad for a while. Me personally, I'm quite a strong character. I wasn't particularly affected by her comment after that, at least not for one, more than one day, and I especially did not. Um, stop writing because, because of what she said. However, if you think about it, there are thousands of children all around the globe suffering because of such unhealthy expressions of opinion. And bullying is the perfect example of freedom misunderstood. The bully believes that it, it is his right to put someone in their place, to show others where they belong. They pick on the weak, the helpless, those who are different from them, smarter children, overweight children, different genders, different cultures or religions. And I could go on listing reasons forever. It is a basic human fear, I'm afraid, a fear of change that resides in all of us. And bullying is a result of an uncontrolled fear of discrepancies. Envy and hate are also born from this, and they are a very corrosive sentence. I want to point out to everyone that thinks themselves superior to someone or something, they should look deep down at the, root, at the root cause. What is driving them? What is driving you to believe that? What exactly is the cause, is the force that convinced them that targeting another person is a logical thing to do? The right to freedom of expression does not imply that our right, it is our right to hurt others. Actually, every one of four students is bullied in a school. And this is a very worrisome statistic. It means that, for example, in a class of 32, eight children suffer from physical and or psychological abuse. And bullying targets all those who are deemed as different. Personally, I don't believe that such labels exist. If you think about it, we are all radically different from each other. From a bully's point of view, that would inherently mean that he, we should hurt and attack everyone else on this planet because they are different from us. That is an ambitious project, no doubt, but inhumanly immoral and impossible to achieve in a lifetime for that matter. And hating on differences is such a weird 
twisted mindset that I personally don't even understand. I do understand, however, how one might come to acquire it. And oppression is sadly something acquired from a very early age, similarly to a child's ordinary education. And much like basic algebra or one's maternal language, oppression is taught in a very systematic manner. Abusive households, biased teachers, mean colleagues, all of these factors can either add up to a tough survivor that wants to help people who, and to make sure that no one else goes through such trauma again, or a very damaged person who takes revenge on society and humanity as a whole for all the wrongdoings that it did to him. And unfortunately, it is clear that more and more people abide um, and they adhere to the second category. Um, it can be difficult to grasp the concept that freedom means that sometimes it is your duty to protect others' freedom as well. And selfishness renders people to think only of themselves using their rights to harm others. All sorts of discriminations are born from this. Bullying in schools is just the beginning. Bullies are not always the big buff kids that steal your lunch or your homework. In fact, bullies are harassers, they are abusers, they are lying bosses and biased judges. You encounter bullies on a daily basis throughout your entire life, sometimes without even realizing. Growing up, knowing that you can do whatever you like because it is your right to do so. Growing up thinking that you are entitled to everything. Growing up believing freedom means that you should always bear the mindset of a lone wolf instead of a pack. That is how what creates bullies. A bully is a person who, although wrongly, makes the most of the freedom that is given to them. Which brings me to the single most controversial statement you've probably ever heard, or at least for me today, which is there is no such thing as freedom. Freedom doesn't exist. It's an urban myth, just like Bigfoot or Yeti or the Mothman. It's a myth that was born out of desire, of the, the desire to coerce all of our rights into one comprehensive one. Absolute freedom is wrong. Absolute freedom is both immoral and impossible, actually, in a society that we live in. And freedom of speech is impossible. We cannot express hurtful or biased opinions. Freedom of expression is impossible. We cannot produce offensive forms of art, for example, in any shape or size. And there is one truth that is sovereign in our society. And that is that freedom can exist as long as it is limited by rules. We cannot always say exactly what crosses our mind. We cannot always do exactly what we want. And if you think about it, there are a lot of borders put to our very existence that will make you say, along with me, freedom isn't real. And that's a pity. But the real question I must ask you now is this. Do we really want absolute freedom? Do we really need absolute freedom? A world with no filter and no rules may be appealing to some, but when you actually let the idea sink in, complete obsolete anarchy would quite literally tear the world apart. And we see every day on every news channel the testimonies of how horrific, poorly understood freedom is. Theft, kidnappings, hate crimes, war crimes, all of these incontestable evidence stand as proof to show the extreme height to which human nature can arise in terms of monstrosity when allowed to do as one pleases. We can never be truly free because by extension, our limitless freedom will in one way or another inevitably hurt others or breach their own freedom. We have evolved too much over centuries of drafting and redrafting laws to throw all of that out the window just for the sake of freedom. If this, all of this sounds too controversial for you, I ask for your permission to offer a definition for liberty. Now, the Oxford Dictionary offers two alternative definitions, and I believe that the, most of us actually stop our understanding of the concept after reading the first one. 
which is the power to write and or act, speak or think as one wants. However, I believe that in order to grasp the meaning of this word and how we should morally and lawfully act upon it, we must pay more attention to the second definition the state of not being subject to or affected by something undesirable. I think that the real freedom, the one filled with rules that we might not like, is perfectly expressed by this second definition. It shows that our freedom exists as long as we do nothing bad to others. As long as our existence is falling harmoniously into place with that of our other fellow beings, our own freedom is unthreatened. When we ourselves become a threat, significant parts of our freedom are restricted as they should be, that that's only natural. Because as long as we don't want our freedom restricted, we should have no right to restrict others. Others is freedom because it simply suits us. And superiority isn't tolerated in a moral society and it should never be tolerated. I hope I got my point across clearly. I hope I opened all of your eyes in regards to this rather controversial topic that most people like to think they acknowledge without actually acknowledging it. This being said, it was my intent to bring some light upon this tricky concept and to share my opinions with you. I like to think that you ended up sharing um even a sliver of my opinion after this talk and that you will think twice before doing something uh, that may negatively impact others remember that rules are not always a bad thing thank you